hole's big enough for Jim to get through if we winch off this board. It's as simple as tic-tac-toe, three in a row, and as easy as playing hooky. I should hope we can find a way that's a little more complicated than that, Huck Finn. Well, then how'll it do to saw him out like the time I was murdered before? That's more like it. It's mysterious and troublesome and good. I bet we can find a way that's twice as long as that. We'll dig him out. It'll take about a week. Don't ever let on to know us. If you hear any digging tonight, it's us. We're going to set you free. Why, well, looky here. Jim has chained Bob one leg with a 10-foot chain to the leg of his bed. Why, well, all you have to do is lift up the bedstead and slip off the chain. Oh. Why, well, I'm dry to hook. That's the stupidest arrangement I ever heard. we got to invent all the difficulties. we got to get a saw the first chance we get. What do you want of a saw? Why, to saw Jim's leg off, of course. Good land, there ain't no necessity for it. Why, hain't you read any books at all? Baron Trek, nor Casanova, nor Benvenuto Cellini, nor Henry IV, nor none of them heroes? Why, who ever heard of escaping a prisoner in such an old maidy way anyway? But there's one thing. He can have a rope ladder. We can tear up our sheets, and he can have a rope ladder easy enough. Why, Tom Sawyer, how you talk? Jim ain't got no use for a rope ladder. Why, Huck, he has got a use for it. It's in the regulations. Go borrow a shirt, too, for Jim to keep his journal on. Journal your granny. Jim can't write. Suppose he can't write. He can make marks on the shirt, can't he? What if we make him a pen out of an old pewter spoon? Or a piece of an old iron bell hoop? And when he wants to send any little, common, ordinary, mysterious messages to the world and let him know where he's captivated, all he's got to do is write it on the bottom of the tin plate with a fork and throw it out the window. Jim ain't got no tin plates. They feed him out of a pan. That's got nothing to do with it, Huck Finn. All he's got to do is write it on the plate and throw it out the window. You don't have to be able to read it. Everything's all right now except tools, and that's easy fixed. Tools for what? What to dig with. We ain't gonna gnaw them out, are we? We're going to dig the foundations out from under the cabin. That's the right way, the regular way. There ain't no other way, not that I've heard of. And I've read all the information about these kinds of things. Why, this ain't no 37-year job, Tom Sawyer. This is a 38-year job. It ain't no matter, Huck. If we was prisoners, it would. Because we'd have all the years we would want, and no hurry. But we can't fool around. We got to rush. We ain't got no spare time. Well then, what are we gonna do, Tom? I'll tell you what, Huck. It ain't right, and it ain't more. I wouldn't like you getting out. We got to dig him out with picks and let on its case nabs. Now you're talking. Picks is the thing, moral or no moral. I don't give a shucks about morality anyway. And I see a slave or a watermelon or a Sunday school book and in no way is particular how it's done, so it's done. It might answer you for you to use a pick, because you wouldn't know better, but it wouldn't for me because I know better. Now give me that case now. The slave who feeds is gonna have a pie with a rope ladder in it. Don't let him see you open it and don't act surprised. I don't see no sense in this, but use white people and use nose better. Hey Jim, you got any tobacco? Yes, sirs, I got some in the back. This was the best fun I'd ever had in my life, and the most intellectual. If only I could see a way to it, we could keep it up the rest of our lives and leave Jim to our children to get out. And it does be all, what has become of your other shirt? It's most uncommon curious. I can't understand it. I know perfectly well I took it off because... Because you ain't got one on! I know it was on clothes on yesterday. I see it there myself. But now it's gone. And the shirt ain't always gone another. There's a spoon gone and there's six candles gone. The rats could have gone the candles and I reckon they did. But you can't let spoons on the rats. Uh, Mrs. Uh, these, are, these are sheep gone. A sheep? Well, for the land's sake, a shirt and a sheet and a spoon and six Miss cat- Mrs. Uh, there's also a brass candlestick missing. Why, 
Huck. Suppose it is considerable trouble. What are you going to do? How are you going to get around? Jim's got to do his inscription with his coat of arms. They all do. Well, I'm ours, Tom. I ain't got no coat of arms. I ain't got nothing but this here shirt. And you knows I got to keep my journal on that. Oh, Jim, you don't understand. A coat of arms is very different. Well, Jim's right when he say he ain't got no coat of arms, because he ain't. But you bet he'll have one before he goes out of this, because he's going out right. There ain't going to be no flaws in his record. Magyar Frita, Minore Otto. Gotta have a book. It means the more haste, the less speed. But he's got to have a bar sinister. All the nobility does. Here, a captive heart busted. Here, a poor prisoner. Forsook by the world and friends, fitted out his sorrowful life. Here, a lonely heart broke, and a word spirit went to its rest after thirty-seven years of solitary captivity. Perished the noble stranger, the natural son of King Louis the Fourteenth. Now for the anonymous letters. What do we want to warn anybody for that something's up? Let them figure it out for themselves. It's their lookout. They don't take no notice of nothing at all. So if we don't give them no notice, well, then there won't be nobody, no nothing to interfere with us. Carry the anonymous letter and shove it under the front door. We stuck a picture of a skull and crossbones on the front door. And next night, another one of a coffin on the back door. I never see a family in such a sweat. The very next morning, we got another letter ready. Where's the butter? It ain't here. You just slide on down the cellar and fetch it, and then mosey on back down the lightning rod and come along. Down cellar went I. I started upstairs very stealthy and got up to the main floor all right. But here comes Aunt Sally with a candle. You just march into the sitting room. You've been up to something you know business to, and I lay off find out what it is before I'm done with you. Here was Auntie picking away at the questions, and me is shaking all over and ready to sink down in my tracks, and the place getting hotter and hotter, and the butter began to melt and run down my neck and behind my ears. She snatches off my hat, and out comes the bread and what was left of the butter. Why didn't you tell us what you were down here for? I wouldn't have cared. Now clear out to bed. Now, old Jim, you're a free man again, and I bet you won't ever be a slave no more. Two devices of satire that Twain employs are situational irony and under overstatement. When Tom and Huck are freeing Jim, Tom says that Jim needs to write something about himself on the wall and have a coat of arms. The youths are not responsible for their actions, and this childlike image of Tom as a mischievous boy is The slaves did not officially gain their freedom until Abraham Lincoln passed the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863. Jim is also gullible in this episode, believing that all of Tom's radical ideas of escape were necessary to become free. <laughs>